See also photovoltaics A solar cell, or photovoltaic cell, is an electrical device that converts the energy of light directly into electricity by the photovoltaic effect, which is a physical and chemical phenomenon. It is a form of photoelectric cell, defined as a device whose electrical characteristics, such as current, voltage, or resistance, vary when exposed to light. Solar cells are the building blocks of photovoltaic modules, otherwise known as solar panels. Solar cells are described as being photovoltaic irrespective of whether the source is sunlight or an artificial light. They are used as a photodetector, detecting light or other electromagnetic radiation near the visible range, or measuring light intensity. The operation of a photovoltaic cell requires three basic attributes. The absorption of light, generating either electron-hole pairs or excitons. The separation of charge carriers of opposite types. The separate extraction of those carriers to an external circuit. In contrast, a solar thermal collector supplies heat by absorbing sunlight, for the purpose of either direct heating or indirect electrical power generation from heat. A photoelectrolytic cell, on the other hand, refers either to a type of photovoltaic cell, or to a device that splits water directly into hydrogen and oxygen using only solar illumination. Applications Assemblies of solar cells are used to make solar modules which generate electrical power from sunlight, as distinguished from a solar thermal module or solar hot water panel. A solar array generates solar power using solar energy. Cells, modules, panels and systems multiple solar cells in an integrated group, all oriented in one plane constitute a solar photovoltaic panel or solar photovoltaic module. Photovoltaic modules often have a sheet of glass on the sun-facing side, allowing light to pass while protecting the semiconductor wafers. Solar cells are usually connected in series in modules, creating an additive voltage. Connecting cells in parallel yields a higher current, however, problems such as shadow effects can shut down the weaker parallel string causing substantial power loss and possible damage because of the reverse bias applied to the shadowed cells by their illuminated partners. Strings of series cells are usually handled independently and not connected in parallel, though individual power boxes are often supplied for each module and are connected in parallel. Although modules can be interconnected to create an array with the desired peak DC voltage and loading current capacity, using independent MPPTs is preferable. Otherwise, shunt diodes can reduce shadowing power loss in arrays with series, parallel connected cells. History The photovoltaic effect was experimentally demonstrated first by French physicist Edmund Becquerel. In 1839, at age 19, he built the world's first photovoltaic cell in his father's laboratory. Willoughby Smith first described the effect of light on selenium during the passage of an electric current in a 20th of February 1873 issue of Nature. In 1883 Charles Fritz built the first solid-state photovoltaic cell by coating the semiconductor selenium with a thin layer of gold to form the junctions. The device was only around 1% efficient. In 1888 Russian physicist Alexander Stoltov built the first cell based on the outer photoelectric effect discovered by Heinrich Hertz in 1887. In 1905 Albert Einstein proposed a new quantum theory of light and explained the photoelectric effect in a landmark paper, for which he received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921. Vadim Lashkaryov discovered PN junctions in CuO and silver sulfide protocells in 1941. Russell O. patented the modern junction semiconductor solar cell in 1946 while working on the series of advances that would lead to the transistor. The first practical photovoltaic cell was publicly demonstrated on 25 April 1954 at Bell Laboratories. 
The inventors were Daryl Chapin, Calvin Souther Fuller and Gerald Pearson. Solar cells gained prominence with their incorporation onto the 1958 Vanguard I satellite. Improvements were gradual over the next two decades. However, this success was also the reason that costs remained high, because space users were willing to pay for the best possible cells, leaving no reason to invest in lower-cost, less efficient solutions. The price was determined largely by the semiconductor industry. Their move to integrated circuits in the 1960s led to the availability of larger fuels at lower relative prices. As their price fell, the price of the resulting cells did as well. These effects lowered 1971 cell costs to some $100 per watt. Space application solar cells were first used in a prominent application when they were proposed and flown on the Vanguard satellite in 1958, as an alternative power source to the primary battery power source. By adding cells to the outside of the body, the mission time could be extended with no major changes to the spacecraft or its power systems. In 1959 the United States launched Explorer 6, featuring large wing-shaped solar arrays, which became a common feature in satellites. These arrays consisted of 9,600 Hoffman solar cells. By the 1960s, solar cells were the main power source for most Earth-orbiting satellites and a number of probes into the solar system since they offered the best power-to-weight ratio. However, this success was possible because in the space application, power system costs could be high, because space users had few other power options and were willing to pay for the best possible cells. The space power market drove the development of higher efficiencies in solar cells up until the National Science Foundation Research Applied to National Needs program began to push development of solar cells for terrestrial applications. In the early 1990s the technology used for space solar cells diverged from the silicon technology used for terrestrial panels with the spacecraft application shifting to gallium arsenide-based IIIV semiconductor materials, which then evolved into the modern IIIV multijunction photovoltaic cell used on spacecraft. Price reductions in late 1969 Elliot Berman joined the Exxon's task force which was looking for projects 30 years in the future and in April 1973 he founded Solar Power Corporation, a wholly owned subsidiary of Exxon that time. The group had concluded that electrical power would be much more expensive by 2000 and felt that this increase in price would make alternative energy sources more attractive. He conducted a market study and concluded that a price per watt of about $20 per watt would create significant demand. The team eliminated the steps of polishing the wafers and coating them with an anti-reflective layer, relying on the rough sawn wafer surface. The team also replaced the expensive materials and hand wiring used in space applications with a printed circuit board on the back, acrylic plastic on the front, and silicone glue between the two, potting the cells. Solar cells could be made using cast-off material from the electronics market. By 1973 they announced a product, and SPC convinced Tideland Signal to use its panels to power navigational buoys, initially for the U.S. Coast Guard. Research into solar power for terrestrial applications became prominent with the U.S. National Science Foundation's Advanced Solar Energy Research and Development Division within the Research Applied to National Needs program, which ran from 1969 to 1977, and funded research on developing solar power for ground electrical power systems. A 1973 conference, the Cherry Hill Conference, set forth the technology goals required to achieve this goal and outlined an ambitious project for achieving them, kicking off an applied research program that would be ongoing for several decades. The program was eventually taken over by the Energy Research and Development Administration, which was later merged into the U.S. Department of Energy. 
Following the 1973 oil crisis oil companies used their higher profits to start solar firms, and were for decades the largest producers. Exxon, Arco, Shell, Amoco and Mobil all had major solar divisions during the 1970s and 1980s. Technology companies also participated, including General Electric, Motorola, IBM, Tyco and RCA. Declining costs and exponential growth. Swanson's law is an observation similar to Moore's law that states that solar cell prices fall 20% for every doubling of industry capacity. It was featured in an article in the British weekly newspaper The Economist. Further improvements reduced production costs to under $1 per watt, with wholesale costs well under $2. Balance of system costs were then higher than the panels. Large commercial arrays could be built, as of 2010, at below $3.40 a watt, fully commissioned. As the semiconductor industry moved to ever larger buels, older equipment became inexpensive. Cell sizes grew, as equipment became available on the surplus market. Arco Solar's original panels used cells 2 to 4 inches in diameter. Panels in the 1990s and early 2000s generally used 125 mm wafers. Since 2008 almost all new panels use 150 mm cells. The widespread introduction of flat-screen televisions in the late 1990s and early 2000s led to the wide availability of large, high-quality glass sheets to cover the panels. During the 1990s, polysilicone cells became increasingly popular. These cells offer less efficiency than their monosilicone counterparts, but they are grown in large vats that reduce cost. By the mid-2000s, poly was dominant in the low-cost panel market, but more recently the mono returned to widespread use. Manufacturers of wafer-based cells responded to high silicon prices in 2004 to 2008 with rapid reductions in silicon consumption. In 2008, according to Jeff Portman, director of IMEC's Organic and Solar Department, Current cells use 8 to 9 grams of silicon per watt of power generation, with wafer thicknesses in the neighborhood of 200 microns. First Solar is the largest thin film manufacturer in the world, using a CDTE cell sandwiched between two layers of glass. Crystalline silicon panels dominate worldwide markets and are mostly manufactured in China and Taiwan. By late 2011, a drop in European demand due to budgetary turmoil dropped prices for crystalline solar modules to about $1.09 per watt down sharply from 2010. Prices continued to fall in 2012, reaching $0.62 cents per watt by 4Q2012. Global installed PV capacity reached at least 177 gigawatts in 2014, enough to supply 1% of the world's total electricity consumption. Solar PV is growing fastest in Asia, with China and Japan currently accounting for half of worldwide deployment. Subsidies and grid parity solar-specific feed-in tariffs vary by country and within countries. Such tariffs encourage the development of solar power projects. Widespread grid parity, the point at which photovoltaic electricity is equal to or cheaper than grid power without subsidies, likely requires advances on all three fronts. Proponents of solar hope to achieve grid parity first in areas with abundant sun and high electricity costs such as in California and Japan. In 2007 BP claimed grid parity for Hawaii and other islands that otherwise use diesel fuel to produce electricity. George W. Bush set 2015 as the date for grid parity in the U.S. The Photovoltaic Association reported in 2012 that Australia had reached grid parity. The price of solar panels fell steadily for 40 years. 
interrupted in 2004 when high subsidies in Germany drastically increased demand there and greatly increased the price of purified silicon. The recession of 2008 and the onset of Chinese manufacturing caused prices to resume their decline. In the four years after January 2008 prices for solar modules in Germany dropped from €3 Euros to €1 Euro per peak watt. During that same time production capacity surged with an annual growth of more than 50%. China increased market share from 8% in 2008 to over 55% in the last quarter of 2010. In December 2012 the price of Chinese solar panels had dropped to 60 cents per WP. Theory The solar cell works in several steps. Photons in sunlight hit the solar panel and are absorbed by semiconducting materials, such as silicon. Electrons and protons are excited from their current molecular atomic orbital. Once excited an electron can either dissipate the energy as heat and return to its orbital or travel through the cell until it reaches an electrode. Current flows through the material to cancel the potential and this electricity is captured. The chemical bonds of the material are vital for this process to work, and usually silicon is used in two layers, one layer being bonded with boron, the other phosphorus. These layers have different chemical electric charges and subsequently both drive and direct the current of electrons. An array of solar cells converts solar energy into a usable amount of direct current electricity. An inverter can convert the power to alternating current. The most commonly known solar cell is configured as a large area PN junction made from silicon. Efficiency Solar cell efficiency may be broken down into reflectance efficiency, thermodynamic efficiency, charge carrier separation efficiency and conductive efficiency. The overall efficiency is the product of these individual metrics. A solar cell has a voltage-dependent efficiency curve, temperature coefficients, and allowable shadow angles. Due to the difficulty in measuring these parameters directly, other parameters are substituted. Thermodynamic efficiency, quantum efficiency, integrated quantum efficiency, VOC ratio, and fill factor. Reflectance losses are a portion of quantum efficiency under external quantum efficiency. Recombination losses make up another portion of quantum efficiency, VOC ratio, and fill factor. Resistive losses are predominantly categorized under fill factor, but also make up minor portions of quantum efficiency, VOC ratio. The fill factor is the ratio of the actual maximum obtainable power to the product of the open circuit voltage and short circuit current. This is a key parameter in evaluating performance. In 2009, typical commercial solar cells had a fill factor greater than 0.70. Grade B cells were usually between 0.4 to 0.7. Cells with a high fill factor have a low equivalent series resistance and a high equivalent shunt resistance. So less of the current produced by the cell is dissipated in internal losses. Single PN junction crystalline silicon devices are now approaching the theoretical limiting power efficiency of 33.7%. Noted as the Shockley Quiesa limit in 1961, in the extreme, with an infinite number of layers, the corresponding limit is 86% using concentrated sunlight. In December 2014, a solar cell achieved a new laboratory record with 46% efficiency in a French-German collaboration. In 2014, three companies broke the record of 25.6% for a silicon solar cell. Panasonic's was the most efficient. The company moved the front contacts to the rear of the panel, eliminating shaded areas. In addition, they applied thin silicon films to the wafer's front and back to eliminate defects at or near the wafer surface. The work on optimizing the atmospheric pressure chemical vapor deposition in line production chain was done in collaboration with Nextwave GmbH. A company spun off from Fraunhofer is to commercialize production. For triple junction thin film solar cells, the world record is 13.6%, set in June 2015.